Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the depth of field function node. Let's go ahead and cover what this does. Basically, the depth of field function node will output a zero or one or a value between or neither, depending on how you have it set up, based on depth of field and where it is if it's blurred or not. So to show it in use, let me go ahead and just show it really quickly. We have here my material applied to the square, the cube, that's not a cube, a sphere, the cube, and the ground plane. And as I'm moving, you're gonna see this green band. Now the green band is representing the depth of field. What is covered by depth of field in terms of blurred, what is not blurred, and what is blurred based on a lerping value I set up. Basically, this is going to be not blurred, zero, and this is going to be blurred, a one value. So you're wondering why is it not blurred? Well, let's go ahead and set up our post-process volume and turn it on. And right now I have our post-process setup volume to work like this, but you're still not seeing anything. Well, I'm using very crummy settings for my post-processing my depth of field here we go but let me go ahead and set it to a really annoying setting here we go here's our gaussian depth of field so as you can see the green is in focus and our brownish orangish color is out of focus on this material so as we get closer to our plane we're going to see in focus we get closer these things become in focus remember it's a zero to one value so our zero is going to be our pure in focus our one is gonna be our pure out of focus, and any value between, like these ones, are gonna be slightly in and out of focus. They're gonna be slightly blurry until we get fully clear. So that's what the depth of field function node does. It outputs where in the depth of field that you're using, if it's blurred or not blurred. Now you have three options on here. You have the default, which is our near and far mask, which is basically what I spoke of. Zero is in focus. One is out of focus. It's no ifs, ands, or buts. It doesn't matter if it's close or far to you. Now it does have two other values, a near mask and a far mask. Basically, if it's in focus or far away, it's gonna be zero when you're using the near mask. And if it's in focus or near, you can use the far mask. So it's basically the opposite when you use the mask. The mask determines near and far, it's going to be one F near it's going to be one far it's going to be one so we went ahead and we switched this to let's say the far mask and we went hit apply and we went ahead and waited for our texture to compile and we looked at it now you're going to see when we zoom out here we no longer see a band we only see green where it's near and in focus and we see orange where it's far away if we were to switch that to our near mask and we went ahead and applied it we're going to see basically the opposite only stuff that's near us and out of focus is going to be orange and stuff that's far away is going to be green so you can't really see it because of the camera i'm in let's try it like this see if that works at all based on the camera but that's how it would work and it's all so based on the foca the not folk the depth of field settings i'm using each of them having different options obviously a near and far range different types of settings these are all adjustable based on your actual depth of field settings so keep that in mind but here's my default then you can see the two different bands based on in focus out of focus near and far like that so that is what our depth of field does it has one input. By default, it's usually nothing, but you can pipe in the pixel depth or a modified pixel depth if you want to go ahead and filter things out. Keep in mind, it's going to output the zero to one. So I'm using it in a lerp, but you could use it to drive other things. You could use it to drive if something's on or off. Maybe you want a higher res texture when you're up close. You can use the depth of field function to determine if it's in focus or not. Maybe if something's out of focus, you don't really want a high res texture being seen or you want something different. I mean, again, 
That's the greatest part about this. Use it to your advantage. Make it where it's a mirror and you're using depth of focus. And the depth of focus is, of course, only affecting stuff near you when you want stuff far away blurred. Maybe a snowstorm effect. As you get closer to something, you go ahead and fade in another texture using a lerp. And or you fade in some other effect or a light or something, depending on if you actually have it in your depth of field, if you can actually see it clearly or not. So you could have a really weird effect where, like for example, if I adjusted this properly, maybe this round cube here has a unhappy face texture on it. And as I get closer, it switches into a smiley face when I can see it. But then it goes scary face, smiley face, scary face. Obviously my depth of field isn't adjusted properly for this, but you can go and use it to your advantage. So that is what the depth of field function node does. Besides being very, very long and annoying to say, it has some very good uses. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.